It used to be intimacy. Sex used to mean we are together. Now it means we did something together. We did it. Are you good at it? It has become a thing. And every thing will ruin a marriage because a bedroom does not allow things. Now, if you asked your grandmother, I'm guessing, I don't know your grandmother, but if you had asked your grandmother, what happens in the bedroom? Your grandmother would have said, nothing. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and and you say, come on, tell me, what happens in the bedroom? Nothing. <laughs> you see, grandmothers are always right. That is the perfect answer. If you want to have a real bedroom, which means a place of intimacy, you got to get all things out of the way. A bedroom is a place of no thing. It's just distractions. Yeah, it's just them. Yeah, what are they doing? They're with each other. They're merging into each other, not allowing anything to come between them. And one of the simple physical requirements, if you're going to merge into each other, you have to have complete darkness. You cannot be intimate with the lights on. Intimacy with the lights on is actually pornography. Why do the lights have to be off? Because your eyes sees. What does the eye see? Things. An eye can't see a person. It can only see things about the person. How tall, how, how skinny, what color, even if you're looking at your spouse, you're going to see something that's going to get in the way of the intimacy. It'll turn intimacy into a performance. And it's a disaster. It is such a disaster that the, the, the sexual revolution, <clears throat> this freedom, to be openly sexual and free love, remember in the 60s? The result is, and this is, this is the, the, the embarrassing truth, couples living together, married to each other, hardly ever have sex. Once a month, maybe. This is a disaster. This is how a nation becomes extinct. And why, why aren't they it's boring, too much pressure, too much anxiety about it? <laughs> okay, here's, are we running out of time? Yeah. Can you see my beard? Yes. Yes. Some guy comes over to me and he says, uh, I'm just curious. Do you sleep with the beard under the blanket or the beard on top of the blanket? <laughs> what is the answer? <laughs> you answer. couldn't sleep after that question. I had, right. I had never thought of that. And once he asked me, I couldn't sleep for a week. You probably... <laughs> I became self-conscious about it. It became a thing. And now I couldn't sleep. Above, no, below, no, back and forth. Once you take something perfectly natural and make it into a thing, you, you ruin it. So you go, you go to the supermarket and a checkout counter, and there's a magazine. Every month, there's at least one magazine that says, 14 secrets to better sex. 
What does that do to people? Mm -hmm. There are 14 things I don't know. You want to ruin a good marriage? Oh, it's so easy. Just say to a husband, so um, sex with your wife, pretty good? I, yeah, I, I think so. Well, well, wait, how will I know? <laughs> All of a sudden, you've killed it. So the, the Me Too movement, which is so much in the news, it's not men abusing women. That's been going on since the beginning of history. It's not power that corrupts and people are taking advantage of their power. That's also been around forever. What's happening in our society is, back in the 60s, men and women agreed that love should be free. It was such an exciting idea. It was like discovering eternal life. From now on, we're going to be free. No more guilt trips, no more embarrassments, no more hiding, no more games. Free love. What happened was free love means we have no respect for intimacy. It's free. So if you ask these men who are being accused of all sorts of misbehavior, and you say, don't you have respect for women? I can imagine that many of them do. So you ask, so why did you do that? He said, do what? It was nothing. It was nothing. We're supposed to be able to have some fun. We're having fun. Now we discover that free love is abusive. There's nothing fun about it. But it's not men against women. It was mutually agreed to take all the meaning, seriousness, importance out of intimacy. Just have some fun. What's the problem? Well, no, it's not fun in games. Now, the being alone with corona is not loneliness. It's not. That's as people are discovering, they were so afraid of the idea of being home for a long time, which is really dreadful. We were actually living like this. Can you believe the average person was terrified of being home for too long? What kind of life is this? The thought of being home with your own children scared you? Made you uncomfortable? Boy, we, we were on the wrong track. We don't ever want to go back to that again. The good news is people were pleasantly surprised. They'd like being home with their kids. And the kids love being home. So it's a different kind of, it's a different kind of, of independence, not, not loneliness. But loneliness, the feeling I'm all alone in the world, comes from a very healthy and very noble vulnerability. Any person who is alone and likes it is missing something very valuable and very precious in the human condition. I'm not enough for myself. Not I need you to cook for me, or I need you to do parallel parking for me. I don't need anything from you. But me alone is not enough. For what? I don't know. There is no what. Just me. Not acceptable. Why? What are you missing? I'm not missing a what, I'm missing a who. So imagine, I don't need anything from you. I really don't. I can take perfect care of myself. I don't need anything. But I want you in my life. 
And for whatever reason, you're not available. What am I missing? Like you ask a, a, a woman, when your husband is out of town, you miss him? Mm -hmm. What do you miss? I already told you, I miss him. <laughs> yeah, but what do you miss? I don't miss a what. I miss her. Him. That's, that's called intimacy. So intimacy, interestingly, is very closely related to vulnerability. And vulnerability doesn't mean you can hurt me. That's a weakness. Vulnerability means I'm not, I'm not, I'm not content without you. In fact, I don't know who I am without you. Where does that feeling come from? We're created in God's image. Why did God create the world? What does he need? I mean, men think they're perfect. God really is perfect. Why did he create the world? This is so powerful. God created the world because being alone is wrong. But what is he missing? Not missing anything. So what does he need from us? Doesn't need anything from us. Right. He just needs us so that he is not alone. What's wrong with being alone? Listen to this punchline. What's wrong with being alone? It's not divine. Alone is not divine. And since we're created in his image, we have that same instinct. I'm great. I'm perfect. I really am perfect. But just perfect me? Not enough. Why? Because you're not there. So if I don't need something from you, I just need you, and you're not there, what am I missing? You. You. You are not in my life, and that's not acceptable. Wow. Love it. Thank you, Rabbi Friedman. Now, you see, that's where love comes in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when all of this comes together and you have that kind of a relationship, love it. Love it. Right. <laughs> Rabbi Friedman, thank you so much for joining us today. We are hoping to have you on again because there is so many more questions that we have for you. Yes. I wanted to ask you right before I do the closing, if you could say one thing to our younger generation about the institution of marriage, what would it be? One message that we would probably invite you again. This is a whole topic. <laughs> if you don't love marriage, don't get married. If you love someone, love them. What are you getting married for? The only way to get married is if you believe in marriage, you love marriage, you want marriage. Then you find somebody who has the same feelings, who also loves marriage, and together you can make a nice couple. But if you just love each other, what are you getting married for? So if a man says to a girl, if a, if a boy says to a girl, I never thought about getting married. I'm not the type. But you, oh, you are, you're, you are marry because you're amazing. Don't marry him. I, I'm away. <laughs> He's putting too much pressure on you to be amazing. He doesn't like marriage. He shouldn't be married. What is so good about marriage? Oh, that's going to take an hour. <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers. It's conversation. It's really relaxed. It's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative and uh, kind of community-like.
it's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs. And there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us. Take a look. Click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best. And join us for some enjoyable conversation.